guys, Olive here. Today I'm here to do part one of my two-part fall book haul. I've acquired these books from various places. There have been a few library book sales that I've been going to. I got a couple books from a publisher, and then I got some from Half Price Books. There was one visit where I went into Half Price Books with my husband, and it was one of those days where everything was looking appealing, and I felt justified in buying everything that looked appealing because I had a coupon. So let's talk about some of these books I got. This first book I got was the only one that I bought new, although I did have my Barnes & Noble discount, and that is The Trespasser by Tana French. I was planning on reading the library version of this, but I was dying to read this. I read the entirety of the Dublin Murder Squad series up to this book, obviously, last year. This was just released. I was doing a buddy read of it, and the library was being a little bit too slow for my taste. So... I caved and bought it new. The cover has this weird texture to it. It kind of feels like a shower curtain, but in a good way. I'm about halfway through reading this book right now and I'm having some mixed feelings. So I'm looking forward to talking about that in my wrap up. These next two books I actually received from a publisher. I normally do not accept books from publishers because one, they normally don't interest me. And two, I tend to be bad at reading front list books. I tend to prefer the back list. I don't feel like there's as much pressure there. But this publisher, Glagoslav, is a very rare exception to this rule. This is a publisher that focuses on printing books in translation from Slavic countries. They gave me a selection of books to pick from and asked if I would like any, so I picked two. The first book I picked is Moscow in the 1930s by Natalia Gromova. This is a fictionalized account of the Moscow literary scene in the 1930s in which history plays a large role, so obviously it's right up my alley. And the second book they sent me is The Tale of Ipe by Ak Welsapar. This is set in a Turkish village right on the Caspian Sea, one of the villagers, who is a fisherman, decides to stand up to the ruling powers who are threatening to confiscate land in the village, and some mystical powers, read a ghost, intervenes. A big thank you to Glagoslav for sending these to me. I'm really looking forward to reading them. It's always nice when a publisher pays attention to your reading taste when they offer to send you some of their books, and they were right on with these selections. In addition to going to library book sales and half price books in the past couple months, I did also place a small-ish order on Book Outlet. This one is one of the ones I got in that order. I got The Tropic of Serpents by Marie Brennan. This is the second book in the Lady Trent series. Just last month, I finished A Natural History of Dragons, which is the first book in that series. And I saw this book, a hardcover, was less than $2 on Book Outlet. And if I'm enjoying the series, then it makes sense that eventually I will want to own all of them. So I thought it couldn't do much harm to have this in my collection. This is another one I got from the book outlet order, and I have been excited about this one for such a long time. This is Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Erica from Erica's Epilogues is a huge fan of Catherine Valente. I have heard so many people say amazing things about this book. It is hard to describe this book, but it says it is a decopunk pulp sci-fi, alt history, space opera mystery set in Hollywood. I love every descriptor in that summary. I am hugely, hugely excited to read this, and I think my husband might want to read this one as well. Speaking of Hollywood, but one set in our own world, I got The Diamond Lanes by Karen Carbo. This is about a lady filmmaker who was back in LA after spending 16 years in Africa. She came back to the States to deal with a family emergency, so obviously we're going to have a little bit of family drama, and I think there's some glitz and glam of Hollywood as well. Next, I have some books set internationally, which is totally, totally my thing. The first one has a beyond gorgeous cover. It's called This Burns My Heart by Samuel Park. This is an epic love story set in South Korea in which our main character, the heroine of the story, is stuck in a loveless marriage. Just before she entered this marriage, she fell in love with a medical student. So that probably makes up most of the conflict in this novel. I've been dying to read something set in Korea from everything I've read. This is an incredible book, and how do you not love this cover? I mean, come on. Another one that I'm, of course, dying to read is The Lily Theater, a novel of modern China by Lulu Wang. This is a book that was translated from Dutch. This was quite a sensation in the Netherlands. It was written by a Chinese author, and she based it off of her experiences growing up during the Cultural Revolution in China. This is a story about a girl who, at age 12, is sent with her mother to a re-education camp, 
and gets an education, but not in the way that the system intended. In this re-education camp, she meets a lot of intellectuals who were also sentenced to time in this re-education camp and starts gaining a lot of ideas from them that she then takes with her when she eventually gets out of the camp and starts to see her country in a whole different way. This sounds like not only a beautiful novel, but one that will cause me to do a lot of thinking, which is my absolute favorite type of book. So of course I am dying to dive into this book. This next one is very topical, which makes me want to pick it up all the more. It's called Gardens of Water by Alan Drew. This is set in Istanbul and follows the intersection of two different families, one Kurdish and one American. A book about the intersection of families, about cultural differences. I'm obviously on board. This next book I've had on my wish list for forever. And when I saw it on Book Outlet, I had to pick it up. It's called The Bridges of Constantine by Alain Mogastanami. Khaled, a former revolutionary in the Algerian War of Liberation, has been in self-exile in Paris for two decades, disgusted by the corruption that now riddles the country he once fought for. Now a celebrated painter, Khaled is consumed with a passion for Hayat, the daughter of his old revolutionary commander, who unexpectedly re-enters Khaled's life. Hayat had just been a child when Khaled last saw her, but she has now become a seductive young novelist. Tell me that doesn't sound amazing. Rounding out this group of books that I picked up that are set in China and the Middle East, I also got A Map of Home by Rhonda Girard. This is set between the 1970s and 1990s in both Kuwait and Egypt. It is a coming of age story with LGBT elements, with political elements. The main character's family had to move from Kuwait to Egypt after the Iraqi invasion. It sounds well-rounded and heartfelt, and I am dying to read it. These next two books are books that I already read and enjoyed, but I had read the library version, so I wanted to own my own. The first is Euphoria by Lily King. This book is focused on three anthropologists and their work studying tribes in New Guinea. It is loosely based on Margaret Mead and her relationship with her husband. This next one is one that I did read pre-book two, but it's one that I still find myself thinking about a lot. It's called Of Bees and Mist by Eric Sediawan. This is a book of magical realism. A young woman leaves her childhood home, is leaving an unhappy childhood behind her, to marry the man of her dreams and move into his home with his family. Although at first this seems like a reprieve from a previously bad situation in her childhood home, she soon finds out that her husband isn't exactly the dreamboat that she imagined him to be and she's finding a very, very formidable opponent in her mother-in-law. It's a fascinating book and certainly a beautiful book, so I'm very happy to have it on my shelves now. These next three are by authors that I have previously read, but I've never actually read these books by them. The first of those is The Position by Meg Wallitzer. This book starts in 1975 and focuses on a couple who wrote a joy of sex-like handbook and their relationship with their children. The fact that their parents wrote this guide is not only humiliating to the children, but has real serious impacts on the family as a whole as they're growing up. 30 years later, everyone in the family is discussing whether or not to reissue this sex guide that the parents wrote. And I think we follow each different member of the family and see what their opinion of it is. I really love the way Meg Walzer writes characters, and this seems to be a very character-focused book, and I am sure I will get hints of her later work, The Interestings, when I read this, so I'm very interested to do so very soon. The next one is Wide Open by Nicola Barker. I just read Five Miles from Outer Hope, also by Nicola Barker, over the summer. I really enjoyed it. This seems like this is one set in a similar vein with it being set on an island and focusing in on some very kooky characters. Nicola Barker has very specific writing. I acquired a taste for it in her last book. I hope that continues to this book. I hope it's as fun as Five Miles from Outer Hope was. Next up is This One Is Mine by Maria Semple. I found this on clearance at Half Price Books and amazingly, it is signed. Apparently this one is not as good as Where'd You Go Bernadette. 
It is focused on a slightly dysfunctional woman, as seems to be Maria Semple's strong suit. It's set in the Hollywood Hills. A woman is kind of going through a little bit of a midlife crisis. This next one is going to make a great fall read in case you're looking for any recommendations for good fall reads. It's called The Gossip of the Starlings. This was written by Nina de Grimont. It is a coming of age story set at a boarding school which is definitely one of my wheelhouses. It seems a bit Mean Girls-esque, which I'm always down for. The next book is The Swan Gondola by Timothy Schaeffert. This is set in the 1898 Omaha World's Fair. In it, we can find con men, a traveling troupe of actors, guillotines, a mysterious carpet bag. It sounds fun. I'm not exactly sure what drew me to this next one, but it seemed like something a little bit lighter and good for spring or summer. It's called The Bitch Posse by Martha O'Connor. It's about the relationships between three different women. One is a mother and wife. One is a self-destructive writer. And one is in a mental hospital because of an incident that happened 15 years ago. Definitely intriguing. And the very last book in this haul gives me Rules of Civility vibes, which is always a good thing, seeing as it's one of my favorite books. It's called Studio Saint X by Ania Sato. It is set in New York in the 1940s, just like Rules of Civility, but it follows three different characters, a 22-year-old fashion designer, a French expatriate fleeing his Nazi-occupied country, and his estranged Salvadoran wife who is absolutely determined to get him back. I really hope it's as beautiful as Rules of Civility. So that was the fiction section of this book haul. Part two will focus on all the nonfiction that I have picked up recently. I am putting that closer to November so that it can help you get some ideas for nonfiction November if you find yourself in need of ideas. As always, if you've read any of these books or have heard of them or want to read them, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. If you would like to chat with me somewhere else other than YouTube, all of the links to my social media profiles are in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.